What's happening, people? What's going on with y'all today? This is Mike Logan, and I'm back with the mentality of a champion. And we up today. I'm I'm in the park again. I got a different spot today because it was it's too hot. It was too hot over there. <laughs> so I had to get under some shade, man. Um Hope everybody's feeling good, man. Appreciate whoever's watching this, man. Who's ever tuning in to this. I do appreciate every time y'all press click, whether it's for a minute, whether it's for two minutes, you know, I do appreciate it, man. Um, I'm here today, not for sure for how long, but, you know, one of the things that I'm trying to do within this, man, because the, the same journey that y'all on watching this is the same journey that I'm on doing it. You know, um, the most consistent thing that I've done throughout the course of my life, which is crazy, is um, when I did Joy Nuggets. Um, that is the most consistent I've ever been in my life. I did it for 60, 60 weeks straight. Every Tuesday, threw up a, a, a nugget of joy from the word on my social media page or something like that. Um, yeah, man. So I'm trying to stay consistent with this, man. This seems, this time right here seems to work for me, man. This is, uh, Saturday. Well, Saturday now y'all probably going to see this on Monday. Uh, but yeah, I'm up, man. It's eight o'clock in the morning. And, and that's the, that's, that's my time. That's my time of the day, man. Everybody got their sweet spot in the day, which they like. And mine just so happens to be Saturday. Uh, I mean, not Saturday, but 8 o'clock in the morning. I'm actually an early bird, man. Most days, I'm up at 5. You know, I'll even wake up, you know, peri periodically throughout, you know, the night. But uh, but today, man, I, I want to bring a subject to y'all, man. I want to talk about uh, willpower. Um, when, it, when, it, when it comes to overcoming... Anything in your life, willpower is one of the determining factors. Um, it's the, the ability to move past any urge, any action, and any emotion, you know? How strong is your will to do what it is that you feel like you're called to do, you know? First of all, let me just start off by saying this. Somebody is waiting on you to start whatever it is that you're supposed to be doing. I know that's heavy, but we got to we got to know and understand that somebody is waiting for you to start the thing that you've been procrastinating on. They're waiting for you. And it's our inability to push past emotions that is holding up somebody else's progress. You know, I think about all the time that I've wasted in my life, kicking it, partying, you know, before I start, you know, going to church and stuff like that. Even now, man, the time that I waste and it's all because I can't control the emotions that I feel like, you know, uh, I was listening to something yesterday, uh, that was so dope. Little little clip on um Instagram from um uh Apostle Matthew Stevens. And he talks about how the enemy brings so many things into your life, you know, and he really doesn't care about too much. Like he doesn't care about, you know, the money that he's keeping from you. He doesn't care about um the the attitude uh that you have. He doesn't care about you know, your, your, your rent not being paid, you know, the relationship that failed. He's not really concerned with most of that. But Apostle Matthew Stevens said, the enemy is after our time. He's after our time. And if we would just understand that, we will push past more of the things that stop us from getting started and stop us from doing stuff. Like, you know, like, I, I, like the other day, like, you know, like I'll just be transparent. You know, my mom came down here and when my mom left, I was low key sad for like a half a day, you know? And now looking back on that, I'm like, dang, like I, I wasted a half a day, you know, 
what else could I have accomplished in that day? You know, how many times do you run into somebody or you run into something, you know, that messes up your entire day? Like you see what I'm saying? Like it might not make you not do what you're doing, but your mind is constantly thinking about what happened earlier that day. Like that is it. Like the funny thing is, is like one of the biggest, one of the definitions of fear is stagnation. Because when you get fearful, you get paralyzed and you stop doing whatever it is you're supposed to be doing, you know? So if the enemy can throw you off and he can get you to stop, he has now taken away time from you. We only get a certain amount of time, each and every one of us. We only get um, so much time, you know, in this life and... If anybody knows me, if anybody knows anything about Mike Logan, you will know that one of the biggest things, if not, I think it's the most thing that I hate. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting time and I hate wasting money. I will calculate so many things just to not waste my time. Like I, I cannot stand uh, too many meetings that don't need to happen. Like you ever, like, I, I cannot stand that, you know, like if we can, um, communicate through, you know, messages or something like that, just to get a tax done, then I'm fine with that. But when it comes to wasting time, I cannot stand it. Ask anybody who knows me. I hate being late, you know, and I hate wasting time. Like, you know, which, which takes me to one of the most difficult things about, you know, the role that I'm in. And I'm not talking about, um, like a leadership role or anything. Well, it is a leadership role, but I'm not talking about like, uh, at my job or, you know, the role of like, you know, in ministry. But one of the things that ladies, I'm gonna go ahead and talk to y'all. One of the things that is most difficult for men is, the balance of time because we want to make sure that everybody gets the time that they're supposed to have and one of the one of the biggest struggles is time with family you know um a lot of times we want to spend so much time with our family whether that be wives or girlfriends you know um most importantly children but the more time we spend with children the less time we spend making sure the family is successful. And I know that sounds terrible, you know, like, you know, but walk with me. I'm not just talking about like, because if our family is healthy, we are successful. But if I'm with you all the time, then I'm not out doing what I need to do to make sure our family runs smooth. Now, our family can be successful depending on however you feel like success is. You know, in, in everybody's family and everybody's uh confines of their living, success is all different, you know, but I'm just specifically talking about, you know, getting money, you know, being able to make sure that wives are comfortable, you know, they have that security that they need, that our children are provided for, that, you know, that they have the necessary things for school and stuff like that, you know, like that's the hard part. That's the hard part right there, making sure that, okay, I spend this amount of time with my son, you know, and and I'm spending this much amount of time with my wife, you know, and I also got to go to work, you know, and I'm also called to do ministry stuff. And I'm also trying to do what's good for me, you know, keep my mental health in line. I try to make sure to go to the gym three days a week. You know, I'm trying to make sure that I'm a successful comedian because the Bible tells us to study to show yourself approved. I can't just hop on stage all the time like, you know, and just perform like there has to be some type of um, structure to the things that we do. And that's what we run into. You know, that's why it's so it's so pivotal to hear the voice of the Lord. If you are the head of a household, I can't stress that enough. I don't care who's watching this. You might not believe in God. You might not believe in Jesus. But I will tell you this much. There's no way that this life is this complicated. And we as humans are supposed to know how to navigate it. There's no way. There's no way as difficult as this world is, there's not a higher being that's supposed to tell us and navigate us through this because life is too difficult. Think about the stuff that we have to study. We have to study how trees are made. 
Why don't we just know how trees are made? Because we didn't create nothing here, you know? So if we have to study trees and the atmosphere and all the things that go on in the world, how are we not called to hear from some thing, someone, some being higher than us? I'll pose that question to y'all. That was just a side note. But yeah, man. But if we would just manage our time better, we would be more effective to the people that are coming behind us. You know, like I, um, one of the things that I've, I've grown into now is not thinking about myself. The more you think about yourself, the more comfortable you'll be with your own progress. Because I'm not trying to be better for me. I'm trying to be better for my family and I'm trying to be better for the people that I'm called to the people that are supposed to hear my voice, the people that are supposed to um, say, oh, snaps, he did it. So now I can do it. That's what we're all called to. We're all called to be on this earth to better the earth, you know, not say that we were the best. No, we're not in this life to be the best that it ever was because everything is supposed to succeed us. That is success. Success a succession success is succession if you make do or create something it is supposed to be around so somebody can succeed what you did to further the world you know everybody's like minds are so warped into you know just wanting to be it the thing like you know but real success is somebody being able to succeed you. That's the point of legacy. That's the reason why we're out here. That's the reason why everybody is out here trying to do as much as we can do for our families because we want our families to go on after we're long and gone. Do we want to leave a mark? Of course. Nobody wants to leave this earth uh, like forgot about it. Nobody wants to leave this earth um, and just didn't do anything. But we are to leave a stamp a legacy not only do people know that we were here but that we have something that lives beyond us whether that is a phrase a book you know some people might leave this earth only being known for something that they said and that's cool long as it helps to better somebody else man you know but the reason why we're here is to further something you know either to start something or to further something because everybody's not made to be innovative and to create something from the ground up. Um, some people are created to be helpers, you know, but it all comes down to one specific simple thing. How much control do you have over the urges and the emotions that come into your life? When you know you're supposed to do something and that alarm clock goes off, do you give in? to the sleep or do you give in to the call do you give in to the sleep or do you give in to the call there's somebody waiting on you there's somebody that that that's looking at you there's somebody I'll, I'll tell you a true story the funny thing is is i rarely get people that say um yo, man, you so inspiring, or yo, man, I really look up to you. Not saying that people should, but what I'm saying is like, and you know, sometimes when you go without that stuff, you can feel like you so not effective and things like that. But trust me, people are watching. People are watching. When I got to New York, which was, uh, I want to say about five or six years ago, all of a sudden I had been, you know, chasing my dreams and trying to do all this stuff for so long. And, you know, I felt like, you know, I'm just out here alone, just doing all this stuff by myself until I got to New York. And I'm talking about people are watching. I started getting messages like, yo, man, keep pushing from people that you wouldn't even think, you know, that that are that are watching you. But it's crazy how many people really watch you. You know, that's why the Bible tells us to go out and let our light shine. You know, not go out and run our mouths most of the time. That's one of the things that I'm learning. I'm learning more and more that, you know, to be a follower of Christ, to be a believer, to be somebody who um, who walks and wants people to see Christ through him. 
you know, I'm learning more and more. It's less about what you say and more about what you do. People watch what you do. They might hear what you say, but before they act on it, they watch what you do. Oh, for real, you said that? Okay, cool. Now you on my target. You know, that's what people do. Oh, you going you this, you that? Oh, okay, cool. You know? Oh, you got like one of the things that we love is I watch people say, you know, I, I get money. Okay, you get money. Now I'm examining your life to see how you get money. You feel me? <laughs> you know, are you borrowing? What's your gas tank look like? You see what I'm saying? What type of what type of meals do you eat now because you get money? Like, you know, that was far left. I don't even know where that thought came from, but that's funny. But but people people are more attached to what we do rather than what we say. And I'm learning that more and more, man. And I'm, I'm trying my best to, if nobody even ever tells me, to continue to walk like somebody who lives for something greater than their self. Who lives for, for, for a purpose greater than them, you know? I try my best not to give in to my emotions because like anybody else, I have them. I do have emotions. I got things that I'm still being healed from. I got past traumas that, you know, that are recently starting to surface, you know, and I'm asking the Lord how to deal with them, you know, but I'm trying my hardest to live past what I feel, you know, I just learned. I just learned that that is literally the, that is literally the, the message of living a deeper life because in Christ we're called to live deep, you know? And what is deep? Deep is, deep is beyond surface. It's to the core, you know? Now, the core of us is supposed to be God's word and God's truth, you know? On the outside of that is our emotions, and on the outside of that is flesh. So I'm supposed to live past how I feel, past what I can remember, all the way down to what the truth is and what God says about me, who I am in him. Have I messed up every single day? Do I continue to sin every single day? Yes, but not purposely. I don't purposely walk in sin and walk in darkness, but I walk in acknowledgement knowing that I am and was a sinner, but Christ has died for me. And now I live in what he has done. I constantly have to remind myself that I am not my past. I constantly have to remind myself that I'm not who the people used to say I am. I'm no longer Tequila Mike. People used to call me that. I'm no longer this dude with this mouth that just used to say whatever's on his mind, you know? I'm no longer the person who tries to run and ruin every conversation. I'm no longer the person that tries to control everything. I'm no longer the person who used to lust all the time. I'm no longer the person who feared every single thing. I am no longer that person. I am more than a conqueror, which means I don't just conquer things, but I now live from a place of victory i have overcame before the obstacle even comes to me that's how i have to believe now because that is what the lord and what the word says about me i'm continuously trying to push past everything i feel because everything on earth will try to tell you you are what you feel my pastor said some of the best one of the best phrases that I still take to this day, which mean, which he says is the enemy would rather for you to feel free than to be free. Most of the time when you are something, it takes you way longer to feel like that than, than the recognition that I am that. When you turn over any leaf, when you start not being the same person you are, you are changed from that point on. But we would rather feel change than to be changed. Change is not always going to feel like you're changed. Change has to be up here. Change is a mindset. That is willpower. Willpower is saying, yeah, I might have messed up yesterday. But today is a whole new day. Today I'm forgiven. Today there are new mercies. Today is so much, today has so much more for me. You know? And if we as, as, as champions would just continue to push beyond the mess up, 
push beyond the failure because you are not the failure. The failure just shows you what not to do. And even if you fail again, the fact that you still have breath and your body says that we can continue to keep on going. I hope somebody receives something from this today, because like I said, I'm not out here for myself anymore. I'm trying my hardest to be out here for for people and for somebody else that's coming after me you know like like most people i got stuff that i want to do like today like i got up and you know i told myself i was gonna get up and come out here but not thinking nobody else was gonna be up but i my son my son was in the bed right next to me when i woke up today you think i didn't want to spend time with him you know he's sitting there looking at me i don't get time to see my son all the time you know so he's sitting there he's looking at me and you know and, and i'm trying my hardest to continue to do what i want to do but my son is there so you know like before i leave i make him some cereal i turn on like a program for him you know because my wife had just got her hair done so she's sleep with the other baby and you know but i know there's people that's coming behind me and yes i do have a duty for my son too but you know but sometimes you have to stick to your certain disciplines create a discipline in your life and stick to it don't let anybody in between the discipline that you've created for yourself. God honors consistency, you know, and he will create moments for the other things. Like, you know, whatever you put off for to be consistent at, he will make room for that thing to come back. You know, now there are some times where you have to put off and I'm not saying consistency by saying same day, same time. Every time you do it, I'm not saying that I'm saying be consistent. Whether you got to do it at 2 a.m. or whether you got to do it at 8 p.m., be consistent. I'm trying my hardest to be consistent, man. I'm, I'm, I'm slowly but surely attaching every other thing to my consistency. You know, start with something small, you know, it's going to sound stupid, but. Start with flossing, you know? But yeah, but I don't want to be on here long. I just want to be able to communicate a message um, and be stronger. Be stronger than those uh, emotions. Be stronger than that urge to go back. Please don't go back. I have to tell myself that all the time. Do not go back. Don't go back to feeling like every, don't nobody care. Don't go, go. Don't go back to fearing. Don't go back to those old mindsets. Continue to press. There's nothing back there for you. You can look back and say goodbye, but don't look back and go back. And going back doesn't mean I, I, I failed today and I gave in to my emotions. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about continually to say, you know what? What's the point of trying? If you need some type of um, revelation or you need some type of uh, uh, confirmation, I'm giving it to you right now. Don't go back. Don't go back to that old person. Don't go back to that old mindset. Don't go back to that old job. Don't go back. Don't go back. Keep pushing forward. There's more ahead of you. There's more ahead of you than the bondage that you left. Yes, the bondage was comfortable because you knew exactly what was coming. The fact that you don't know what's coming is scaring you right now. It's making you fearful. But that shouldn't make you fearful. It should make you hopeful. Because guess what? When we are weak, he is strong. And whenever we don't know, and whenever we can't figure out, and whenever we don't have the answers and we go to him, that is us being weak and allowing him to be strong. And by him, I mean Jesus. This has been the mentality of a champion. I hope you continue to push back. I want to pray for y'all. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you and I praise you, Father, for whoever may be watching this. 
God, I thank you. And, and Lord, I also include myself in this prayer. Father, it is you, Lord, that works in us to will and to do. Father, continue to strengthen our will. Father, continue to give us the strength to carry out, Lord, the things that we know we should do, Father, but the things that we cannot push ourselves to do. Father, continue give us the strength. Lord, forgive us for any sins that we've done that's displeasing in your sight. Father, we release any offense that we've had towards our brother and our sister. God, anything that is blocking the communication from us hearing you. You. Lord, continue to push us, Father. Continue to allow us to give and give us the strength to work towards something bigger than ourselves, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. And I just pray for anybody else who's watching this, God, who doesn't know you. Lord, make yourself real to them in a way that they haven't thought. Lord, 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 speak to them and, and allow them, Father, to know and to hear you and to know that it's you speaking to them. Lord, I thank you and I praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see y'all later. Appreciate y'all.